we have encountered a basis of a subspace already several times. For example, when we are studying eigenspaces of a matrix. A basis is very nice because it allows you to describe the whole subspace, which contains infinitely many factors, by just a few factors. We are now able to extend this extremely useful concept to a general vector spaces. Let's have a look at this video. So, what is a basis of a subspace of a general vector space? Well, a basis is a subset of a vector space V if it, it spans H and if it is linearly independent. Then B is a basis for H a subspace of V. And uh, a special case, of course, is H is all of V and then B is a, a basis for the whole vector space. Let us look at a few examples. First of all, we have our normal vector, say V equals R3. Then we know a basis. We can take E1, E2 and E3, the vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 1. So, these three. Uh, and those form a basis for R3, as you know. And those are called a standard basis for R3. It's the easiest basis you can think of. Now let us extend this idea of a basis to other vector spaces. For example, let us look at P2. For example, V equals P2. Can we find a basis for V? So, what can we take? Well, we could take the easiest. What we can think of is take the polynomials 1, t, and t squared. This is set from a basis for P2. Well, we need three things. Uh, subset, well, that is fine, 1, t, and t, t squared uh, are in P2. Uh, independence, that is also fine, uh, because as we saw uh, earlier on, the set of 1, t, t squared up to t to the power n is an independent set, so that part is okay. And third condition, uh, this, uh, this set span P2. Well, let's check the third one. Well, suppose we have an arbitrary polynomial in P2, that's a polynomial of the form A0 plus A1 times T plus A2 times T squared, where A0, A1 and A2 can be anything. Well, you see that all of those polynomials are combinations of uh, 1 and 2 and T squared, with th those weights, A0, A1 and A2. That means that you can form any polynomials with the basis factors from T and T squared, which means that B spans P2. So this third condition is also satisfied. That means that we have found a base of V2, uh, namely 1, T and T squared. Well, this is the easiest basis you can think of for P2. So this will be our standard basis for P2.